Today on Rest Spirits in Gear, we recreate Jerry Cantrell's guitar tone from the Allison Chains album Dirt. <laughs> Dirt is one of those albums that for me really define kind of my entryway into adulthood. I obsessed over this Allison Chains album both for songwriting purposes and guitar tone purposes. I'd only been playing guitar for, I think maybe six months when I discovered Dirt, which had been out a year at that point or so. My friend borrowed the tape. We both collectively wore my tape out and then we bought the CD version, which we could not wear out. And we just listened to it nonstop over and over again. And it really shaped the foundations of things that I like in guitar tone, songwriting, lyrics, singing, etc. It really was the full package for me. So doing this tone recreation video has been a daunting thought and I've been putting it off until you guys have just been demanding it. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, in order to know the guitar tone that we will be attempting to recreate, we must know the origins of the guitar tone itself. Now, the Dirt album was recorded in 1992, and it was recorded by Dave Jordan, uh, who did, you know, Anthrax, Sound of White Noise, uh, Salsa Distortion, Jane's Addiction. He was the hottest producer for rock and metal. He's done the Rolling Stones. I mean, he's a, an extremely decorated producer. And Joe's tone was rooted in the techniques that Dave had developed over many years in the music industry. And what they did was they had three different amps for three different frequency purposes. In a, I believe it was a July 1993 Guitar World interview, Jerry himself stated that he used a combination of a Bogner amp, an unidentified Bogner amp, it's probably the ecstasy or something like that. A Mesa Boogie dual rectifier, and this would have been a very, very early pre 500 Rev C dual rectifier for sure. And a Rockman headphone amp. And the Boogie took care of the low end frequencies. The Bogner took care of the mid range and the Rockman took care of the top end. And they would have all three rigs going at the same time. And then Dave would use the faders to kind of mix and mix in different frequency ranges that he saw fit. And this is evident on the Allison Chain song, Them Bones. Because if you will notice, the rhythm guitar tones are a little darker pre-solo. And then coming out of the guitar solo, the rhythm guitars are a little brighter and a little bit more mid-rangey because they were simply moving the faders on what sounded best to their ears post the guitar solo while in the mix process. This is pretty cool. Now, as far as guitars, all that is really known is uh, Jerry probably used his GNL Rampage with a Seymour Duncan JB pickup, and specifically the microphones were probably a bunch of SM57s sprinkled with some condenser mics here and there, as that was what Dave was using at the time. And that is really all of the information that we have the, to the best of our knowledge. So we're gonna come up with Jerry Cantrell's guitar tone. So first, here's what I came up with. Now it's at this point, I'm going to reiterate the guidelines with which I operate in for these tone recreation videos. I use whatever is at my disposal to get to the end result of getting as close as I can to the guitar tones. Now I have these amps next to me and I did attempt to use them, but having you know, multiple cabs and multiple mics per cabinet and, you know, working out phase issues, et cetera, et cetera. They weren't, it wasn't really working out for me. And I did try to use a different combination of every single amp that I have. And I spent a lot of time using real amplifiers for this tone. And I didn't end up using any of them. I ended up using a Fractal Axe FX layered with multiple guitars and multiple amps 
with multiple caps. And I got pretty damn close to the Jerry Cantrell dirt tone, in my own opinion. Now I know some of you are gonna be quite upset about me using any kind of digital anything, and you're gonna leave some ranting comment down below in the comments and be all elitist and say, oh, you could totally tell. Well, I am here to tell you, I don't care. I don't care about any of that stuff. My goal is to get as close as possible to the given tone. And I think I did that, and I will use whatever means necessary to get there, because you know what? All of the toys are awesome. This dual rectifier is awesome. A fractal axe effects is awesome. A line six helix is awesome. A tiny pod from 2002 is awesome. So before you leave a nasty comment down below, calling me some derogatory name, just know I don't care. So with that, let's get to how I recreated Jerry Cantrell's tone from the Dirt Record. Okay, so I have Logic opened up. This is my mix and I'm going to break it down systematically to let you guys know how I arrived at the final guitar tone and the final mix really. The drums are get good drums and they are the uh, P4 Matt Halpern pack. And these are a really great all around drum kit that just sound great under a lot of different scenarios, including this one. Now, something that I noticed from the original isolated bass track on the Dirt record, and specifically the Them Bones song, is there's some flanging going on on the bass tone. And I recreated that, and I also recreated the SVT uh, bass amp tone, which is a super straightforward rock guitar amp tone, or bass amp tone. So here's how that sounds isolated. Pretty cool, sounds huge. So my big breakthrough with this song was realizing that the rhythm guitars, they sound quad track to me. When I double tracked the guitars, it sounded too tight. And I'm not referring to my playing. Now, Jerry is an extremely tight player. I am not too shabby of a rhythm player. I am not saying I'm Jerry Cantrell. However, when you double track the rhythm part on this song, it sounds empty. And here's what I mean. I'm going to I'm going to mute two of these tracks. Now, I quad tracked this. So, these are the this is the four DI tracks, and then here are the subsequent four reamped tracks. I have a Friedman BE from the Fractal, and then I have a Friedman HBE Harry Brown Eye from the Fractal as well. Now, this is with two of the tracks muted. Here is what the song sounds like. It sounds good, it's not thick enough, and there's a lot of overtones in the actual guitar tone. Now, could this be because there were three separate rigs going at the same time? Yes, for sure, but we will never know. So in order to compensate and do the best that I can, I doubled up on each side, meaning I have two performances on the left and two performances on the right. Now this, the top two DIs are my Music Man, Stingray RS guitar with a Fishman uh, Open Core Classic on voice two. And then the second set of DIs uh, is my uh, uh, 2019 Gibson Les Paul 50s standard gold top with a Duncan JB in the bridge. And when you put all those together, it sounds huge. Now here are the isolated guitar track.
The HBE is a little brighter than the BE. So how I am processing this is a few ways. The, the BE tracks, the darker tracks, are panned in a little bit at 42%. 42 degrees, I should say. Uh, the uh, HBE, which is a little brighter, are panned pretty far out, right? Like 99% out. These four tracks are being bust, and my signal processing is as follows. I'm going into a universal audio SSL channel strip with a little bit of EQ, but I'm mainly using this for coloration and gain staging and using the filters down here, the high pass and low pass filters in the lower left. I am then coming in with an oxide tape machine with the noise reduction off and I'm um, running it at seven and a half ips to warm it up to take away some of the high end. I am then coming in with a fab filter pro Q3, just taking a little bit out of the lower mids uh, because a lot will build up with quad tracked, right? Shelving off the, the low end and shelving off some of the top end. And then finally, I'm coming in with a Teletronics uh, LA-2A uh, and using it as a, with a little bit of limiting. Um, I'm not doing it super hard. I'm just, I'm basically just taking a little off the top for levelness and that is it. So I'm gonna play all of this without the processing, and then I'm going to turn everything on as the track plays. And that's it. You can, you can hear that the, uh, the oxide tape is doing the heavy lifting uh, for the guitar tone. Um, everything back then was recorded to a tape machine, so it just makes sense that it kind of warms it up and it grounds it off. I didn't go nuts with the tape machine like I normally do on purpose. I didn't think anything else needed it. And lastly, this uh, is the setup that I had going in the Axe FX3. Um, the first amp is a Friedman BE with all EQ settings at noon. Uh, with uh, the cabinet section, I used three different cabinets, uh, basically a 57 and a 160 on a rectifier cabinet. And then I came in with a pre-Rolla Marshall cabinet, uh, dial it down just a little bit. And then I came in with some parametric EQ. I didn't touch anything. I simply switched out the amplifier using the same cabinet. And you can see that everything else is still the same. And I just switched out the amplifier for a Freeman HBE and I basically just went with that and kept all the settings the same because I wanted some cohesiveness in the overall guitar tone. And uh, that's basically it as far as the fractal goes. Yeah, that's it. I can't believe it's finally over and I am so glad uh, it's all over and done with. You've been wonderful, I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Video's over. I hope it was good. I mean, if it wasn't good, I apologize. But if it was good, you're welcome. <laughs>